Welcome. This is the second in a series of video tutorials on LaTeX. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to typeset commonly used mathematical notation using LaTeX. Please view the first tutorial, titled Creating a LaTeX Document, before proceeding with this one. Let's begin by creating a new file and saving it as Tutorial 2. As always, we begin our code with backslash document class, and we fill in the arguments, our font size, and then the type of document is article. And we need slash begin document and slash end document. And in between those two commands, we type the body of our code. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is superscripts. And we use superscripts commonly when we want to show exponents. For example, 2x cubed. So let me type 2x cubed. To get the exponent, I use the caret symbol. So there's 2x cubed, but this shouldn't be in text mode. This should be in math mode. So don't forget, you have to wrap the math with dollar signs for math mode. Okay, And um, again, the math mode code appears green and the text mode appears in black. So let's build our document uh, to check and see how it looks. And I'll zoom in so we can see it more clearly. Okay, that looks good. 2x cubed. Now remember when we use single dollar signs to surround the code, we're in inline math mode. So our math appears on the same line as our text. If we wanted to set this apart from the text and have the math on its own line, we would want to be in displayed math mode. And to do that, we open with double dollar signs and close with double dollar signs. So let's build and see if that makes a difference. Okay, so there, now the 2x cubed is on its own line. Now let's try 2x to the power 34. So again, math mode, 2x to the power 34 and end math mode. So I'm hoping um, to see an exponent of 34. And when we build this, that isn't actually what we got. We got 2x cubed and then we got a 4. So when we type superscripts, the single character after the caret symbol is what's going to show as the exponent unless we indicate that we want more than just the next character. And we do that by wrapping the entire exponent in curly brackets. So I need curly brackets around the 34, indicating that I want 34 to be the entire exponent or the superscript, not just the 3. So let's build that and hopefully now we'll see x to the power 34. Okay, good. So now I have 2x to the power 34. Let's try 2x to the power 3x plus 4. 2x to the power, and then in curly brackets, and I like to go ahead and type the first one, the opening curly bracket and the closing curly bracket, just so I don't forget, and then I can move my cursor back in between and fill in what I need to fill in. So I want to the power 3x plus 4, and I just type 3x plus 4, and we need to then close this with two dollar signs. And we can build and take a look at that. 2x to the power 3x plus 4. And finally, let's try typing a power raised to a power. So we'll type 2x to the power 3x to the fourth plus 5. 2x to the power, and I'm going to open and close curly braces. So my exponent should now be 3x to the power 4 plus 5. So 3x to the power 4 plus 5. And close math mode. Okay, so I have an, now an exponent within an exponent. Subscripts work in much the same way. But instead of a caret symbol, we use the underscore symbol. 
For example, if I want to type x sub 1, it's x underscore 1. Close math mode. If I need more than one character in my subscript, then again we wrap it in curly braces. For example, x sub 12. Now if I want a subscript within a subscript, I have to be very careful about where I put my curly brackets. For example, if I want x sub 1 sub 2, um, this is not going to work the way that I've typed it right now. I want x sub 1, the entire x sub 1, to have a subscript of 2, so I have to wrap the x sub 1 in curly brackets, and then give that a subscript of 2. So if we build that, we see we have, it's a little bit hard to see, uh, but x sub 1 sub 2. Uh, and in the same way, if I wanted x sub 1 sub 2 sub 3, I wrap everything that I want to have that last subscript in curly brackets. So in front of the um, x there and after the 2 there, and then give that a subscript of 3. Next, let's take a look at Greek letters. Greek letters are commonly used in math notation, and the most commonly used one is probably the Greek letter pi. So if we want to display the symbol for pi, we simply have to use backslash and spell out the letter pi, and we want to make sure we put that in math mode. I'll use display math mode, and build, and we get the symbol pi. Uh, and that works for any Greek letter. So for example, we could use backslash alpha, or beta, or gamma, etc. to display those lowercase Greek letters. If we wanted to type the formula for the area of a circle, for example, we could do a equals backslash pi. Now we need r, and then we want r to be squared. So we use the caret and the 2 and math mode. Let's build that and we have a equals pi r squared. For trig functions, we simply use a backslash and then the abbreviation for the function. So for sine, for example, would be sin. And then in braces, we'll put our argument. So that would give us the sine of x. Or we could do y equals sine x. And this is something you could type in text mode, but the advantage of putting it in LaTeX mode is that it italicizes the variables and spaces everything out properly. Cosine would be slash cos, and tangent would be slash tan. For log functions, we use backslash log for log of x and backslash ln for the natural log of x if we want to use a different base for example instead of base 10 if we wanted base 5 then we go back and use an underscore to get our subscript so this should give us the log of x in base 5. For square roots, we use backslash sqrt, and you can see it suggests making some suggestions here for me. Um, we have on the top row square brackets and curly brackets, and the bottom just the curly brackets. So if we just use the curly brackets, we'll get a regular square root. For example, if I want the square root of 2, I put 2 inside the curly brackets, and that should give me square root of 2. If I add the square brackets in front, 
then whatever we put inside those square brackets will be the root. So instead of getting a square root, we could do the cube root. So this should give us the cube root of 2. Remember, if we want the root of more than one character, we use we wrap everything in the curly braces that we want to take the square root of. For example, find the square root of x squared plus y squared. We can even have square roots inside of square roots. Let's do square root of 1 plus, and I'm going to do the square root of x. So I need another backslash square root of x. Then I close my first set of curly brackets. I close my second set of curly brackets and my double dollar signs to close math mode. So that gives us square root of the quantity 1 plus the square root of x. Next let's try typing some fractions. About two-thirds of the glass is full. Now this is just text mode. So if I build, if you recall that a line break in the code doesn't necessarily correspond to a line break in the output. If I wanted about two-thirds of the glass is full on a separate line, I would have to insert an extra line break in my code. So I can build that. Okay. Um, about two-thirds of the glass is full. So I am displaying the fraction two-thirds, but I want it to look more like um, a fraction where we have the numerator, a horizontal bar, and then our denominator. So let's try putting the two-thirds in math mode and see what happens. When I build that, nothing changes. Okay, so there is a special command to type a fraction, and it's not just the forward slash. To type a fraction, I want backslash frac, and then we need a set of curly brackets for the numerator and a set of curly brackets for the denominator. So inside the first set of curly brackets, I'll type 2, that's my numerator, and inside the second set of curly brackets, I type 3, that's my denominator. Notice that I didn't have to type a slash at all to get that fraction bar in there. It's built into the code. So now we see about two-thirds of the glass is full. Now because I typed that in inline math mode, uh, you may notice that it kind of shrunk the fraction. It doesn't look as large as some of the other math notation that we've been typing, uh, and that's to make it fit in line better. We may or may not want to do that. If it's too hard to read, because if it's, got, if it's shrunk down so small that it's hard to read, uh, we can work around that. I don't want to go to display math mode, because that would put two-thirds on a separate line and then continue the rest of my text on a third line, which will just look silly. So I want to make it larger instead. And I do that with a command called display style. So everything I want displayed larger, I wrap with the command display style. Backslash display style, and then in curly brackets, I wrap what I want displayed larger. So let's build that. And we can see the two-thirds now is the normal size for what we would get with our just using our math notation in our normal math mode. Let's try a few more complicated fractions. How about a fraction with x in the numerator and x squared plus x plus 1 in the denominator? So I'll put this in display math mode. And as I start to type the command for fraction, um, I can just hit enter to complete that. And then I just fill in my numerator. It's already highlighted the, the dot, so I can just type over that. I just wanted x in my numerator. Now, I can use my mouse to go to the next set of curly brackets and type over that dot, or I can just hit tab. That makes it a little bit easier. And I want to put x squared 
plus x plus 1 in for my denominator. And then I want to close math mode. So see how that displays. Nice. Let's try a fraction with uh, square roots. So we'll do backslash frac. In my numerator, I want the square root of x plus 1. So backslash square root of x plus 1. And the nice thing about letting the program fill in the empty command for me is that I know I'm always going to have the right amount of brackets. Every time you have an opening bracket, you need to have a match, matching closed bracket or you're going to get an error when you try and build your file. Okay, so right now I'm um, in the, den the set of curly brackets that represent the denominator. So in the denominator, I want to put the square root of x minus 1. So backslash square root. Again, I can type this myself or I can choose it from the list here and get all of my brackets automatically inserted for me. It's much easier to do that. x minus 1. And then come out of math mode and let's see if we did that correctly. Good. So we have square root of x plus 1 in the, our numerator, square root of x minus 1 in our denominator. Let's try a fraction within a fraction. So I do slash frac and we're going to do 1 over 1 plus 1 over x. So in my numerator I just need a 1. And then I can tab over. In my denominator I need 1 plus and now I want the fraction 1 over x. So backslash frac and 1 over x. So 1 in the numerator, tab over, x in the denominator. And we'll build that. Now, I'm almost at the bottom of the page. This number 1 here is the page number 1, and I can see that I'm almost towards the bottom there. So sometimes um, the document will automatically a, a resize things so that you don't have something tiny on the next page all by itself. So that might happen, or it might just push us over into page 2. We'll see what happens when we build. Okay, it did change the spacing of the document slightly to accommodate um, for this extra bit of text that we have here. So we have our fraction 1 over 1 plus 1 over x. Let's try one more. We'll put a fraction inside of a square root. So we'll start with our square root. And I'm going to put the fraction x over x squared plus x plus 1. So I need a fraction. Numerator is x, tap over. Denominator is x squared plus x plus 1. Now this did push us over to page 2. So here's the end of page 1, and now we're on page 2. So square root of the fraction x over x squared plus x plus 1. That concludes our tutorial on commonly used mathematical notation in LaTeX.